In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Happy Easter, dear brothers and sisters. We are in this day rejoicing in the Lord's resurrection. And let us begin these sacred mysteries on this Easter Sunday by recalling our sins and asking our Lord to grant us His peace, His mercy, and His forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And with great joy, let us sing and, and rejoice with the glory. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal of brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man, God, 
raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but live, and declare the words of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And at this time we will pray the sequence. Christians to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praises. A lamb, the sheep redeems. Christ, the only is sinless, Reconcile sinners to the Father. Death and life have contented in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life who died reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw wayfaring. The tomb of Christ, who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection. Bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ, my hope, is arisen. To Galilee he goes before you. Christ, indeed, from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, Victor King, ever reign. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ, our Paschal Lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us then feast with joy in the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning. While it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. 
He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloth, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first and saw and believed, for they did not yet understand the scriptures that he had come to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have come to this glorious day in which we celebrate the risen Lord, in which we celebrate how Jesus, through his death on the cross, but then through his resurrection, conquered death and sin and darkness and brought the light into the world. And we might be saying, though, this is a particular uh, moment to be thinking about this, but it's strange to be thinking about this, about this uh, great news, when all we are hearing, really, throughout the days, throughout our weeks, during this time in which we are living in the world, is darkness. So how do we really rejoice when we are filled with darkness, and we are filled with worry, and we are filled with a fear about what is happening and what is to come. How does the joy of the resurrection and the Easter uh, light come into our lives? Well, actually, it has to and should come into our lives more than ever. The other day, a friend, of, a priest friend, was sharing with us something that I thought was beautiful and just a very real reflection that I think we can all uh, think about and, and should be able to take in, into our thoughts and hearts this Easter in particular, which is what happened in the very first Easter Sunday, 2000, year, over 2,000 years ago, when all this was happening at, at, at first. We have to remember that compared to the Easter Sundays that we are so used to and are so beautiful, where the churches are packed with people and everything is filled with song and joy and, and celebration and there is beautiful music and flowers and lights in every church of the world. The, the first Easter Sunday was not like that at all. The disciples, all of the apostles, were still mourning the, the death of Jesus. They were in utter shock that his, uh, their Savior, that they had put all of their trust and followed with all of their life, had died so horribly on the cross. And they were filled with fear because they, they had real dangers. They had real dangers because all this commotion was still happening in Jerusalem. It was not over yet. Jesus was put to death, but there was still uh, persecution in the minds of, of many in Jerusalem, the very same people that had uh, put Jesus to death. They were filled, and rightly so, with worry about what was ha going to happen to them. They could not leave uh, their, their home. They could not leave that place where they were all gathered, which is thought to be the upper room. They were all there in, in, in worry and sadness, and, and basically they were shut in. They could not leave that, that place because their lives were really in danger. Their lives were in danger that if they left that, uh, that place, they were risking great things uh, upon themselves. And so they were all together, but they were worried and they did not know what was to come. And then uh, these women take a risk and, and they were called to go to the tomb to make sure that, that Jesus had all of the anointing that they didn't have time to finish uh, prior. And then they uh, realized that he was 
uh, that he wasn't there anymore. And they see the resurrected Christ and on one side rejoice, but are filled with fear. And then the next thing they do is go back to all of the, the apostles. And then as we see in today's gospel, Peter and John run to the tomb and verify for themselves that he indeed was risen. But the rest still weren't sure what was happening. They came back with this story, but this is such a story that it was difficult for all any of them, even though they had believed so much in Jesus. This is something that had never been seen before in, this, in the sense that it wasn't Christ resurrecting someone. It was Jesus himself rising from the dead by the power of God's uh, Holy Spirit. This is something that never has been seen before and never will be seen before. It was the greatest miracle. And at that moment, they, they still didn't know what to think of this. They still didn't know what to do with this information. And they were still shut in into that, uh, in, in that place where they were on that first Easter. And then what happens? Jesus himself, as we will see in many of the uh, Easter uh, readings during, during these whole days in all the Gospels, we see that Jesus himself, the risen Christ, goes through the walls of that place and comes upon them. And he offers them who were in this place of, 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 of fear and, and, and shuddered in, that he offers them and will tell them, my peace I give you, I give you my peace. And at that moment, they were filled with the peace of Christ, despite the fact that they were still in danger, and even though they were, they were, they were filled with the, the joy and the peace of seeing the risen Christ, they were still in danger, but everything changed for them. Everything, they were still in danger in a practical manner, they were still going to be persecuted, yet they were filled with the peace of the risen Christ. And that is something that has to inspire us all, because even if we feel shuddered, even if we feel uh, that, that we are worried, even if we do feel that our lives in some ways might be in danger, we are open and should be open to the peace, the gift of peace, which is the gift of the risen Christ that he wants to give us in our hearts and in our minds. And that peace is a peace that comes directly from God himself. It's a peace that St. Paul will describe that says the peace that surpasses all understanding. It is basically that peace that no one can take away from us and that joy that no one can take away from us because it comes from God and it comes from our union with God and it is not dependent on anything that is happening on earth. It is not dependent on the circumstances of life in this passing journey. It is not dependent on, on the things that we are suffering. It is a peace that is there as the base of all. And sure, it doesn't take away the fact that we can still mourn those that have died and be filled with sadness. It doesn't take away that we can still be uh, suffering if our health is is not well at this moment. It doesn't take away uh, the fact that we may be concerned about our financial difficulties. That's normal and human, but the peace that surpasses all understanding is there to come and illuminate everything else and put everything into perspective and, and remind us that whatever happens, God is with us and the risen Christ is here to bring us his mercy. And even when we confront death, and sometimes uh, the, the reality of death is, is more in our minds than other times, or we are mourning the death of a loved one, even then we have to remember that with that peace that surpasses all understanding, we come to truly hope and, and truly trust and have confidence in the promises that Jesus himself gives us, that the risen Lord has, has brought to us, which is the opening of heaven, the opening to the fullness of life, where he has promised to invite us in to spend all of eternity with him in the mansions of the Heavenly Father. 
so on this Easter Sunday, that we might be feel, feeling just and be living just like the first apostles uh, shuddered in the upper room, not knowing what's going to happen. Let us welcome the risen Christ into our homes and hearts, and let us say yes to him. Yes, yes, Jesus Christ, I want that peace, the peace of the resurrection, the joy of the resurrection to fill my heart and my mind, despite everything else that might be going on in my life. God bless you. And now, brothers and sisters, let us, at this moment, remember that we are baptized, and uh, we are, because of that, adopted sons of our Heavenly Father. Let us remember that that is our first identity, and we, at this moment, are going to renew our baptismal promises. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with Him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and his works, and promised to serve God and the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask of you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered dead and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. And at this moment, let me sprinkle you with the holy water that reminds us of our baptism. And now, with faith in the risen Lord, let us ask our Heavenly Father to help us with all of our needs. Let us pray for our church as we begin this Easter season, that the light of the resurrection may shine upon the whole world in its darkness. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for peace in the world, for peace in every home, in every family, in every nation, in every heart, that the peace that surpasses all understanding may guide us all. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those who are living right now in particular darkness because of the pandemic that we are suffering, those that are sick, those that are mourning, those that are vulnerable those that are going through financial difficulties, and for those uh, doctors, nurses, those that are finding cures, those that are working in the front lines and are filled, overwhelmed, that the peace of Christ may illuminate them and trust in life eternal and in his love forever. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all that we have promised our prayers and we pray that as we begin this Easter season, that everything that God has begun to do in our souls during this past Lent may continue to blossom each day. We pray to the Lord. And let us pray for all who have died, and especially we pray for all who have died from the coronavirus. We want to pray uh, in a special way for 
uh, all of those of our loved ones in our parish and, our, and those we know. Uh, I want to uh, pray in a particular way for uh, Father uh, Richard Costella, who passed away, and, 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 and Deacon Emilio, who passed away, and we pray, and Sister Janet Baxendale. We pray for all that we have promised our prayers to of those we know that are mourning. And we pray for all the souls in purgatory, especially priests in purgatory, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, and we ask you that you help us always to be filled with that peace that surpasses all understanding that the risen Lord wants to give us. We ask you to help us with this and with all of our needs, which we present to you each day in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who takes away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalting your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the 
in a similar way. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Amen. And happy Easter, everyone. And let us also rejoice with our Blessed Virgin Mary, who is rejoicing with all of us after being in the foot of the cross, now uh, in helping us to be filled with the joy of Christ's resurrection.